Let's jump into sound design. To start, I want to show you all of the foundational workflow and editing tools I use within Logic. Even though I'll be talking specifically about Logic Pro here, you can use these techniques and concepts in any audio editing software or DAW. We're going to cover four tools that I use when crafting all my sound design. These tools are also highly useful when editing audio in general whether it's for making temp tracks or editing your vocal samples, et cetera, et cetera. You'll need to master these techniques to become more effective and efficient in the world of sound design. So let's break them down. First, we're going to talk about the different cursors and tools I use, namely the zoom tool, the marquee tool, and the fade tool. Second, we'll cover bouncing audio, both in place and as the final step when you're exporting your sounds. Then we'll cover automation and how I use that to manipulate the audio. And finally, we'll talk about bus routing, which is a really helpful concept to give you a lot more freedom in how you craft your sound. OK, so with that being said, let's jump right in. All right. So here we have Logic Pro opened up. And the first thing I want to have you do is we're going to go over here to the uh, preferences and we're going to go over to advanced and we're just going to make sure that enable complete features is selected and this is really important because it gives us access to everything that logic has to offer under the hood so by default this is unchecked so let's make sure that we go ahead and check that okay the next thing we're going to take a look at are the cursors and tools that i use um, if you look over here up at the top you have access to the regular cursor right so this tool uh, whatever you select the main cursor will become that tool uh, sometimes it'll only activate when you uh, scroll over a region, right? Like this mute tool. So I normally leave this just on the pointer. And then over here on the right, this tool is uh, whatever you have selected here is if you press the command key, it will turn into that tool. So that's me pressing the command key and it's turned into the marquee tool. So if I select, for example, the glue tool and I press the command key, it's now the glue tool here, right? Again, for me personally, I leave this on the marquee tool and I just leave that as a default. Now, it's important to kind of learn there's a couple different ways that we can move fast on this, right? Because if I have to come over here and click on every single tool every time I needed it, um, it's just going to become slow and cumbersome. And so this is where learning different shortcuts is going to speed up your process quite a bit. So the three tools that I use all the time are the zoom tool, the marquee tool, and the fade tool. Okay, so the shortcut for the zoom tool is actually really, really simple. It's the control and option key. Okay, so if I just select the zoom tool here, it turns into this little magnifying glass. And what's really cool about this tool is if I could just highlight and uncheck it, the entire screen becomes my uh, zoom window, right? So I can like really zoom in way into the waveform. OK, and then I just double click to zoom all the way back out. So really useful tool, especially for editing audio. We're going to be using this tool quite a bit so because we want to get up in there and really have some precise uh, edits. So the zoom tool is your best friend. I use it all the time. Next one is the marquee tool. OK, the marquee tool is really, really cool because what it does is it allows you to uh, select a portion of the audio. Right. And like let's say even if I hit play here it'll start playing wherever I put that little marquee so I can just marquee a certain section and then hit spacebar to play and it'll start and end on that section which is a really cool option okay so that you can really just like zoom in and listen to very specific parts Okay. The other benefit of the marquee tool is if I have the marquee tool selected and I double click, it will cut the region, which is, again, a major part of the sound design process, right? Cutting the audio regions that you're going to be doing this all the time. So instead of having to use the scissors tool, I can just use the marquee tool, hold down command, and I can just cut the audio by double clicking wherever the cursor is. Okay. So now the marquee tool is really, really useful. I'm just going backwards here. Now, 
what's the shortcut to get to the marquee tool? Well, if you leave the second cursor on the marquee tool here, then you can just hold down command anytime you want to use the marquee tool. But let's come over here and we'll go to the preferences again, okay? General, and then come over here to the editing tab. And you'll notice that there are right under where it says pointer tool in tracks provides marquee tool click zone. Okay. And what's really cool about this is whenever you hover the mouse under uh, on the lower part of a region, the main cursor will turn into the marquee tool. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. And with the fade tool, same kind of concept. So we'll, we'll check that out in a second, but let's look at the mar marquee tool click zone, make that selected. Okay. And so I'm going to zoom in on this little region. And if you notice, as I'm hovering my mouse up here, it's the cursor tool. As soon as I get to the bottom half of the region, it automatically turns into the marquee tool. I'm not doing anything. It's just as soon as I hover here, it's the marquee tool and I can click and I can cut it as needed. Or I can click and drag, hit spacebar, and that little region will play for me. So marquee tool click zone up here. It's just the cursor. I can, you know, grab it and drag it. And down here, it becomes the marquee tool. Really, really, really useful. Okay. So that's a big one. And then finally, the next tool that I use all the time is the fade tool. Okay. So if I've got this fade tool selected, what it, that's going to allow me to do is in any given region. Okay. If I'm holding down command, since I've got the second tool on fade, hold down command, and you'll see it turns into this little fade tool. And I can grab the end of a region, click and drag, and now it creates a fade. So that's going to fade in from zero volume uh, to full volume by the end of this fade. And then I can click on the actual, if I'm still holding down command, I can click on the actual fade arc and change the rate of the fade in, right? So um, this is a super useful tool and we're going to be using it all the time in sound design because uh, we're going to manipulate the audio and part of that manipulation is going to be uh, manipulating the volume in and out of each sample. So the fade tool. And now the same thing applies here. If I come back to my preferences general and go to uh, the editing tab, enable the fade tool click zone. Okay, when I come over to the region now, and when I click up here at the top and I click and drag, it's going to fade in. So let's see what that what happens if that's not selected. Okay, so I'm going to come back to my preferences and I'm unable the fade tool click zone. Okay, so now when I click up here, now it's just a repeat tool. Okay, and so I can't access this fade tool unless I come over here, select the fade tool, hold down command. And now I can access the fade or I can delete the fade. Okay. But if I come back over here, preferences, general, and go to editing, fade tool, click zone. Okay. Then if I click up here at the top, this is now the fade tool, regardless of I'm not pressing and holding command. Okay. I can click over here and now I have access to the fade tool. Now I still have to hold and click command if I want to edit the fade. Okay, but if you want to just make quick fades, uh, this is a really easy way to do it. All right, so those are the three tools that we use uh, all the time, which is the zoom tool, hold down control option. You can zoom out by double clicking, zoom in by click and drag. Okay, control option for the zoom tool. Then the next one is the marquee tool. We uh, set up the zone so that I can come down here. I can click double click to uh, cut regions. Okay. Um, and then also using the marquee tool, I can highlight a specific section. And when I hit spacebar, it's going to play from there. Now, if I double click on this, okay, if I double click and um, click up at the top, it's going to cut the, the region, right? Did you see that? So as soon as I select the marquee section and I click up here with the regular cursor, it's going to cut on both sides. So that's another useful use of the marquee tool, which is select a section and click up here and it cuts the front and the back. All right. And then the last tool finally was the fade tool, which you can select as your secondary cursor and you click and you hold 
and down here and now you can create a fade or we can do it by coming over here to preferences general going to editing and then enable the fade tool click zone and so as soon as you click at the top of a region now that gives you access to the fade tool all right so those are all the different cursors and tools i use all right, so the next thing we're gonna cover is bouncing your audio. What does that mean, bouncing? Well, bouncing is just replace that with export. Basically, we're gonna take the whatever sound that you have in Logic and we're going to export it. Uh, now you can either export it into a track in Logic so that we can play with it some more, or once you're totally done, we can export it outside of Logic. So we're either going to bounce it, remember bounce means export, bounce it in place, or we're going to bounce it outside of Logic. So I'm gonna select the track. So in this uh, instance, I've got this region of MIDI data on the sampler instrument. Uh, it sounds like this. If I just come over here, hit play. Okay, but this is all just MIDI information. It's being played back in real time, uh, but I want the audio so that I can manipulate it even further. Okay, so I'm going to bounce in place. If I right click it, come over here to bounce and join, and bounce in place. Uh, and the keyboard shortcut is Control B, Control B, okay? And so that's something I use all the time, just memorize that keyboard shortcut, Control B, bounce in place, okay? So then this menu is gonna pop up and we can just rename it, uh, whatever we wanna call it. Synth, let's call it Synth Track 1. And it's going to create a new track, okay? And that's important. It's gonna create a new audio track uh, with all the, the audio inside of it. Okay, and all these settings, we're just gonna leave them as is. So uh, with the source, we're going to mute the source, meaning it's gonna mute this uh, um, software instrument track. And we want to not bypass the effect plugins. Uh, let's say we've got some effects uh, built in. We don't wanna bypass anything. We wanna include the audio tail, include the audio tail in the region, uh, both the file and the region, and include all the volume and pan. Okay, and with the normalize, just leave it on overload protection only, or you can set it to off. I would not recommend putting it on because it's just gonna change the sound that you're hearing. Uh, so let's not change that at all. Okay, so I'll hit okay. And it will bounce the track in place. So you notice it created a new audio track. Okay, this is the software instrument track, and this is the audio track. And now I can uh, manipulate this audio even further. Right, so this is uh, bouncing in place. Now, let's say I've already done all of my edits. Let's say, you know, I'm gonna use my marquee tool and I'm gonna make a little cut right here. I'm gonna use my fade tool and make a little fade in and a little fade out, okay? And um, let's say I only want that sound, okay? So now I can either bounce this one in place and it will follow all of this extra fading that I added and I can create a new one and keep going. Or let's say I'm done, this is the sound that I want, right? Let's say that's the sample I want and I'm done with the uh, sound design process and now I wanna export it outside of Logic. Well, the next option is to bounce it uh, directly out. So I'll Command B is the shortcut, okay? Command B. And here we have the option of either bouncing as an MP3, a PCM. A PCM is like a wave. It's an uncompressed format. Okay, so um, if we're going to use these samples as um, audio within main stage or uh, for sampling and putting them into like, let's say a sampler like SP404, et cetera, et cetera, we're going to want to bounce them as waves. Okay, just make sure that uh, you select the resolution and the sample rate that you want. Um, and it will bounce just this region, okay? And again, really important, we wanna include the audio tail. That's super important. Make sure that that is selected. When I hit okay, a menu will pop up and then I just need to pick wherever I want to uh, have the file bounced, okay? And then now that audio file will appear in that folder and you can either import it back into Logic or into main stage or wherever you wanna take it. So the two different ways to bounce your audio, either bounce in place or bounce out. Bounce in place is control B, and then bounce out of logic is command B. So learn those two shortcuts, there's bouncing audio.